Hey, what's up, players? Today we're going to do another one in our series for the Bounty Hunter training. And essentially what that is, is uh, teaching you some basic web application security concepts, uh, the OWASP top 10 type of items, so that you prepare you better for doing bug bounties and making that sweet, sweet moolah doing it. Um, so in this particular one, we're going to go over what's called command injection. And I'm going to use a site called DVWA. It's a, uh, a purposely vulnerable web server that I'm running here locally on my machine. And it has a command injection one, and it's purposely vulnerable, so don't think that this is indicative of most web servers out there today uh, because there's a little bit more insight into filtering and input validation than there was in the past, but this is a good training tool. So it's got three levels that we're going to attack. We've got low, medium, and high, and uh, what we're going to do at the low level, it doesn't do any input validation or any of that sort of thing, and then uh, we're going to go from that up to the high, and see if we can bypass these different things. So let's start off here over in command injection and explain kind of what it is. Now, when I do these particular bounty hunter ones, I don't want to just kind of skiddy it out and just, you know, hey, copy and paste this, da da da. I want to teach you the technique. And I also want you to look at the source to understand what is the developer doing that allows this to happen. Second, what is the developer doing to not allow things to happen? In other words, the input validation so that you have a better insight in what's going on so we don't going to get all skitty crap like normal, uh, like some people would do <laughs> where they just copy and paste stuff and go at it and they don't understand the technique. They don't understand what's going on behind the scenes. We don't play that here. All right, so in this particular one, the command injection that we're seeing here, it says here on the page that we need to, to ping a device, enter an IP address. So this is an input field. And when you're doing bug bounty stuff uh, or web application testing, that is a very common thing that we start testing with is any input fields here. Now, whenever this particular type of function is happening, what is likely happening behind the scenes is that the web application is invoking a web shell, uh, or I'm sorry, a command shell on whatever that web server is running. So in this case, it's running on Linux. So it's going to pull up something like bash, right? So here's bash, here's the command shell. And if I use bash and I just type in ls, it lists the directory of where I'm at. If I do pwd, prints my working directory, right? Those sort of things. So my guess with that particular page is it takes the input from the user, let's say 127.0.0.1, and it passes it to a ping command. It invokes this command shell to do a ping. So it's commanding it to do ping 127. Dot zero dot zero dot one. Whoops. And in this case, it's doing a count of uh, four, four packets, because in, in Linux, it just keeps going if you ping in, in, until you do a control C, unlike Windows, which does it four times and stops. So we're going to say tax C four to make sure it only does four pings. And this is what the web page is likely doing. It's saying whatever the user input is, stuff it in there as a variable and ping that, right? So let's take a look at the source code and see if that is actually the case. So what's cool about DVWA is you can actually go down here and look at the source. So we'll look at the source and uh, we'll see what's going on here. I'm looking over my camera. So here we can see the post that's being sent and it looks like they're grabbing the input from the user. So whatever I type in for an IP address, it's assigning it to this variable called target. And then what it's doing is it's putting it into a command down here where it's invoking the command shell. And it's saying, do the command ping against whatever the person input here. Okay. Now you'll notice there's one for Windows and there's one for Unix. And you can see the taxi force here because, again, with Linux, it will just keep going on and we'll have a, a slight denial of service if it's really heavy, heavy. And uh, the server is low on RAM and that sort of thing. So we don't want to do that. So in this particular case here, what's not happening is there's no validation of what the person typed in. It's just saying, whatever he types in, pass it to the ping command. So in that case here, what if they put something in that uh, like concatenates commands? You're probably thinking, what do you mean concatenate command? Well, if I come back here to my bash shell and I run the same command, but I want to run a second command after this one is done, I can use what's called a semicolon here. And I can say, I don't know, let's do uh, ls. Okay, so I'm gonna list the directory of what I'm in currently, which is my root directory, after it does the ping. So let's see what happens. So here we can see it's doing the ping four times and booyah, there we go. We can see it lists the directory as well, right? So that is a common thing in Linux. It's nothing malicious or evil. It's just the way it is. Now you can also, instead of the semicolon, you can also do an ampersand ampersand like that. And then you can 
do another command. So I'll just say PWD. So I'll run the four again, and then it should print my working directory, which is root right there. Okay, so that's what they call concatenation. So if they're not checking for anything with that, what if we come back here? I'm going to close this back out here. And oops, I'm going to go back here. So what if we come back here and we do the same command and we type our IP address in here. So this is the normal function of it. It should ping and then echo the results to the page. And it does. So what if I did the same thing, but this time concatenated something on there? So I say semicolon uh, ls and submit. So it's going to do a ping and look at that. It lists the directory of the web server directory that it's in. Pretty awesome. Now on Linux, there's a there's a location called Etsy PassWD, which has a list of different users and their groups and things that are on the server that that machine's on. It's good for a bad guy to kind of look at that and uh, see exactly what it is. Now it's not good for you, the server admin, to allow that to happen. But in this particular case, because we do have a problem with this command injection not being invalidated, we can do some more commands. So we can say, let's, let's do semicolon, we'll say cat um, etsy slash passwd. If you're not familiar with Linux, cat is basically the command version, the command line version to say, uh, print right here in bash shell the, the contents of whatever this is. So let's see what that is. We'll hit submit, see what happens. There we go. Pop, pop, pop. Another server drop. We can see here there's a variety of different users. Nothing really major going on here on this server, but you can see that's pretty, pretty much a problem. All right, so that is with no validation. So let's see what happens when they do some validation. So we'll come over here and we'll up the security a bit to medium where they're doing some input validation. And let's go back here to the command injection and let's try. Actually, I'm not going to type in the IP address. I'll just do the command, I'll just do the concatenation. It's essentially saying ping nothing and then run the next command because I'm getting tired of typing that in. So I'm gonna say semicolon and ls. And let's see what happens. Okay, nothing. Nothing happened there. Let's try ampersand, amp oops, I'm gonna click inside there. Let's try ampersand, ampersand, ls, see if that works. Okay, nothing. All right, let's take a look at the source and see exactly why it's uh, blocking us. And it looks like they got a blacklist. Okay, so right here you can see a blacklist and we can see our semicolon and we can see our ampersand ampersand is listed there. And that's the reason why that those two don't work. Here's the problem though with a blacklist, which you don't want to use, you have to continually keep adding as you find that there's new bypasses and there's new exploits. You're probably thinking, well, it's probably not that many. I mean, right? Well, <laughs> if you look here, there's a website called payload all the things and it has some command injection payloads and you can see here there's a variety of filter bypasses that are listed here that you can try that you would have to blacklist <laughs> if you did it that route if you did your validation that route which is not wise it should be a white list in this case here we can see there's a variety of different ways to do things uh, let's look up here a little bit here it's the basic stuff okay so there's our semicolon right there's our double ampersand, but look at this one. Pipe symbol, interesting. So it looks like the pipe symbol can be used to concatenate. Hmm, let's try that. So we'll come back here and uh, let's try that one. So we'll say uh, pipe and ls submit, booyah. All right, nice. So that's the reason why is because it wasn't part of the blacklist that was listed here under this one. Right? So that's why you don't want to use a blacklist. And what's the difference between a blacklist and a whitelist? Blacklist says this is not allowed. Right? We don't, we're blocking these, this, 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 and this. Whitelist says nothing's allowed except this. See the difference? So in this case here, it basically eliminates the need to have to keep up and learn every single bypass and put them in your list if you just say only run ping. Or you can say, um, only run one command in the string. You're not allowed to add, to do more than one command in a string. That's one way to do it, right? So that would be an example of trying to fix this problem. So we can see we can bypass the medium one. So let's go ahead and bump it up some more. 
Let's see what else this bad boy has for us. We'll bump it up to high. I like their impossible. <laughs> That's crazy why they would be so bold with that statement. <laughs> All right, so let's try We already know we can't do the semicolon. We can't do the uh, ampersand, ampersand. So let's try our uh, pipe symbol, LS, and let's see if that works. Okay, doesn't work. All right, let's go ahead and find out why. Let's look at the source. Ah, there's why. <laughs> a bigger blacklist. So in this particular case, this is why we don't recommend a blacklist because you have to continually keep adding and then adding and then adding. Um, and you may miss some things that would then get exploited. So this is the reason why is because the pipe symbol is there and it's saying not allowed. But something odd about this one, you notice here there's a space after that one. Now there's no space after these, right? These are all right in here with no spaces. So does that mean according to this blacklist, that a pipe symbol space is not allowed. Hmm. What if we did a pipe symbol without a space? So let's try it. So we'll do a pipe symbol, no space, LS. Booyah! There we go. And that's how you bypass that. So you can see blacklist is no good. Now there's another web... Uh, purposely vulnerable web server called BWAP, which is an older one too, but they also do command injection ones. And on their GitHub page, they have their functional check that you can look at. And you can see they're doing exactly the same thing here, right? They're doing a blacklist and they're doing a string replace. So the string replace is saying, if you see these characters here, just make it, string replace it with nothing, with null, with, with space, nothing there. And that would essentially stop those ones there until somebody finds a way to do it different. But the real tough one is this escape shell CMD. It's essentially doing the thing that I had mentioned earlier where it's saying you're not allowed to run more than one command in this string, okay? So we're not allowing the concatenation of other commands. So it is kind of whitelisting it because you're saying, well, what's the code itself saying? Well, it's ping, right? I mean, that's the command that it's coded in. It's hard coded in to do a ping. Therefore, if I'm not allowed to run any other commands along in that same string, I'm essentially whitelisting to say only ping is allowed, right? So that is one way to fix that. Now, there are some bypasses to those, but we won't get into that today. That's a little bit more advanced stuff. Um, but that kind of gets into what, what that is all about for command injection. Now, another way that you can do uh, a testing of this sort of thing is you can use a tool called Burp Suite. And um, I'm going to do a video on Burp Suite uh, soon, which will kind of describe some of the basics of it. And it'll be part of the Bounty Hunter series because... In my line of work where I do AppSec stuff, this is the only tool I use, essentially, because it is pretty much all you need, in my opinion, for web application security testing. Well, they have a thing called Intruder, which is kind of cool, and you can actually add in a word list for that sort of thing for the command line. Now, you can also, if you didn't want to use Burp Suite, there's also another one that you can get that is really effective, and it's called Comics, and... Uh, it is an automated command injection tool that you can go ahead and grab for free at GitHub. And this one here does all of the different bypasses that you saw like in here, plus some more. It does a little bit more deeper stuff. Um, and it takes a while if it's on like high, right? If it's on high or impossible, <laughs> it will try some things like how to, how to bypass the escape command shell, those sort of things. So it's a really, really good tool. Now, if you didn't want to go through this route, but you prefer Burp Suite, what you could do is you could uh, grab a sec list and clone this, you know, GitHub here to your to your Kali Linux. And under Fuzzin, you'll see there's one down here called, um, here it is, Command Injection Comics. So this one here is a word list of comics payloads that they try in that particular tool. And you can see there's a ton of them, right? So if you were to grab this particular one here, if you're not familiar with how to do any of that stuff here, what you can do is this. Let me go back here. Sec list, grab this, and I'm gonna copy this address. Um, I think I already have it, so yeah, I already have it. But what you would do is you would say, get clone, and then you would put in that IP address. And it would clone it into a folder here. Now I already have that folder and you can see right over there, uh, here, right there. So I already have the sec list on there. So now that I actually have that word list here, what I can do 
is I can go to burp suite and I can do this here. It's an interceptor. It's an HTTP interceptor. And uh, again, I'm not going to get deep in the detail of how to work burp suite because I'm going to do a separate video on that. But I'm just going to show you quickly another way that you can fuzz this sort of thing on an application is the basic simple simplicity of burp suite is that it will intercept requests. So if I intercept and turn the intercept on and I come back here to this and I go ahead and type anything in. So I'll just say, you know, 127.0.0.1. Oops, there we go. And submit it. It'll actually capture it before it gets to the server. And what's cool about that is I can actually modify things in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to Intruder. And this is another little tool within Burp Suite here. Now on the free version, it's going to be pretty slow. So we're not actually going to go through the full attack. I'm just going to show you a basic way to do this. When you get over here to Intruder, you can go to Positions, and you can see there's a variety of things highlighted in this slight blue. So I'm going to clear those. And then I'm going to pick this value here. And I'm going to go ahead, highlight it, and click Add. There we go. So now it's saying this is a position that I want to inject each one of these payloads from you know, wherever that was, <laughs> uh, wherever that particular payload was, I wanted to inject it into that field. And I'm going to use Sniper just for quick demonstration here. But what you would do is you would load that particular one, which is right there. Like that. And it's going to load the entire word list in here. Okay. I always like to take off the URL and code in case it bugs out on it. And then what you would do is you would start attack. This just tells you it's going to run crappily slow. <laughs> If that's a word. And then it will start the attack and it will start going and injecting that in that position. So if you take a look at one while it's running here, you can see here what it's doing is where the IP section is. It's actually stuffing that payload right there, right? And then if we look at the response, it will tell us if it actually responded with whatever the value is that it's looking for. And you would have to kind of look down through and see if it did anything here listed anyways so that's what you would use to do a fuzz as it were using burp suite okay but we're not going to do it because it's going to take forever but you get the idea so there's a variety of different ways you could do it comics is a good one and uh burp suite is another good one and in this particular case i forgot to <laughs> turn the intercept off bing there we go but anyways, that is command injection. That is how you do it. And that's some different ways that you can bypass it. So make sure as a developer that you're always looking to whitelist things so that you're saying this is all that's allowed, right? Nothing else. That way you don't have to worry about, you know, missing out on any type of, you know, bypasses that are out there or fat fingering or something like we did, like it showed before with the pipe symbol with the space. We don't want to do any of that kind of stuff. So we want to make sure these things are input validated as good as possible. And then the second thing would be the output encoding, but that's more for XSS, which we'll go into later. So I hope you enjoyed that video here in our series, a little short little nugget here for command injection. So until next time, peace out players.